Hi, in this video we'll look at arcs and sectors, in particular we'll look at finding the radius or angle given the arc length here is sector. So the question you might see, you might be told that this length is 20 centimeters, this angle is 200 degrees, and you need to find what the radius is going to be, you have to put it backwards. So for this we're first going to recap how to solve the force problem. So if I want to work out the arc length, what I need to do is first work out a circumference. Circumference will be the diameter times pi. So the diameter is going to be 2 lots of 7. So that there will give us the circumference. And then we need to times that by what fraction circle we have. In this case the fraction circle we have is given by how many degrees we have out of 360. And a few times this together that will give you x. I'll give you that arc length. We're going to look at the backwards problem where we need to find the radius given the angle and the arc length. So we know the arc length, which in this case is 40, will equal the circumference. To work out the circumference, we need to double the radius and then times it by pi. So 2 lots of x times pi. And then we need to times it by what fractional circle we have. Here we can see that because this cutaway is 90 degrees, that means I am left with three quarters of a circle. Now this is just an equation which we can solve to work out x. So we have a bunch of stuff being times by x and we should know the opposite of times by x is just dividing by x. So everything that was times by x I'm now going to divide by it and that will give me x. From there you can just go to your calculator and then just type all that in. So 40 over 2 times pi times 3 quarters, which gives me the radius of 8.49 for each of the different figures. Okay, let's see another example, this time using the area of a sector. So first the force problem. If I wanted to define this area, so the sector would be the full area times by the fractional circle we have again. So the full area we can work out by using pi r squared, so pi times 7 squared, and the fractional circle we have, again it's based on how many degrees we have, in this case it's 120 out of 360. Turn the calculator, that will give you this area of the sector here. We're looking at here, it's basically the backwards problem. And again, I'm going to lay it out the same way I laid out over here. I know the sector, which in this case is 17, must equal the area which is going to be pi times 3 squared times by what fraction I have. And again the fraction is given by what angle we have. So x over 360. And then just like before we're going to solve it like an equation. First step, I'm times by a bunch of stuff here and we should have the opposite of times in this dividing. So if I do 17 divided by pi times 3 squared that will leave me with x over 360. Then we have a fraction, the opposite of dividing by 360 here is going to be to times by 360. And if we times this fraction by 360, the 360 just goes on top of the fraction. Then we've got x by itself, so pretty much done. All we need to do now is just basically ask our calculator what the answer is going to be. And again, you can just type that all straight in and it'll do all the hard work for you. Okay, so in this case our angle is 216 degrees to three, to three significant figures. And if you look back to our shape, that looks about plausible. Again, these aren't drawn accurately, but it should look roughly like what it actually is. Okay, just going through one more slightly hard example. Here again we're using the area of a sector. So we need to find the radius of this circle. So we're looking to find this x over here. We've got the angle, and we are told the area is 150 centimeters squared. So again, we're going to lay it out the same way. We know the sector will equal the area for a full circle times by the fraction. And we're going to fill in what we know. So the sector is 150. The area for a full circle is going to be pi times r squared. In my notation, this is pi times x squared. Because we can see here that x is the radius. And lastly, the fractional circle we have 205 degrees 
and it's out of 360 altogether. Again, we're sort of like the first example. We've got a bunch of stuff being times by x squared, and the opposite of times in is dividing. So if I do 150 divided by pi times 205 over 360, that means I am left with x squared. This one's slightly harder. We then have one last step. Here we can work out what x squared is, but we don't want x squared, we just want x. I'm sure the opposite of squaring is going to be square rooting. So x will be that square root. Time to calculator, you do the square root first and then throw the fraction in. So it's the same idea, but in case of extra step after to square it right at the end can cause a bit of confusion and a few mistakes to creep in. Type it all in, and then we're done. And here x is 9.16 to three significant figures. Okay, that's it. Hopefully that wasn't too stressful, too hard. And as always, thanks for listening.